Hey, what's up, everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And today what we're going to do is go further into the Juice DSP module. And today we're going to do an implementation of the infinite impulse response filter. So I have two pages open here. So I have the filter. This is the, we're going to need this to actually implement the filter itself. And then to tell the filter what type it is, we need to use this class here, the IIR coefficients, along with a couple other things. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. Um, I, I've put together some skeleton code. It's just a real basic thing that um, has a cutoff dial and a resonance dial. There's one thing that I wanted to point out here before we started. Normally I would put the my scoped pointers for my slider attachments here in public because I thought that they needed public access in order for the processor value tree from the processor side to actually be able to access it. But that's not the case and I was actually getting this error uh, a null pointer error because what was happening was that the sliders were actually um, destructing before the actual slider attachments and so what we need to do is make sure that these slider attachments for any future tutorials are actually declared after the sliders because the destruct the destructing when you close the UI actually happens in reverse order of the order that you've actually declared it in. So if I've declared this dial and these two dials, and then I've declared these slider attachments, when they destruct, they actually go in reverse order. So it'll be this filter res value, then the filter cutoff value, and it goes backwards. So um, big shout out to Normalized from the discussion forum that's that helped me out with that because I was getting this crazy error and I couldn't figure out why. And that's the reason why because these slider attachments have to delete themselves before the sliders themselves. So, so that's, so that's fine. So let's go ahead and start by going in here into the plugin processor. And so the first thing we're going to do as we did before, uh, I could, I could just start this off with some skeleton code, but I decided to go through it again and just to just to review. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to actually do a little bit of setup to use the DSP module. So of course you have to add the DSP module itself to your juice modules in the producer. So if you're not familiar with that setup process, you might want to check my last tutorial. But what we're going to do now is we're just going to go through setting this up again. So we'll do DSP and then we need to do this process spec. So this is just the setup once again for our, to use the DSP module. So I'm gonna use DSP process spec, I'll call it spec. And then we just have three methods that we need to add here. So we have spec dot sample rate and we just need to set that equal, equal to the sample rate and then spec dot maximum block size is equal to samples per block and spec num channels is equal to get total number of output channels. So that's fine. And then down here, just to help prepare for our stuff, we can get rid of all this stuff and all this commentary here. We can actually get rid of all that. So we need a audio block. I did that last tutorial as well. Uh, so we need a audio block. So DSP audio block. This will be of type float and we'll call this block. And then what this is, this is the buffer. So this is just a data structure that, that just refers to the buffer itself. So, okay, so that's fine. And I think we're good to go. So what we can do now is we can actually just go ahead and start 
creating our infinite impulse response filter itself. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to our process duplicator. So as I, as I was saying in a tutorial before, we need a process duplicator because all of these, all these processes are mono processors. So if we, so if we want them to process in stereo, we have to duplicate it for the left hand side and the right hand side. And so this processor duplicator allows us to do that. So we're just going to go ahead and implement that now. So DSP processor duplicator. Don't know why my autocorrect never works. Okay, and so and so as I said before, what we need to do here is we need to tw we need to put the mono processor type. So we want our filter there. So this is what we want. So DSP IIR. Filter of type float. So I think that's fine. And then here we need our state type. So we need our actual coefficients. So this is what we need right here. I'm just going to copy this like this. I should probably have done this about 10 tutorials ago. <laughs> so just going to do that. Just felt like typing it like I was a real, a real developer there. But here we are. I think we're at a level now where we can <laughs> start copying and basting. So this is going to be called, I'm just going to space this out. And we're just going to call this low pass filter. We're just going to do a low pass filter, but you know, the process would be the same if we were doing um, another type of filter. So now what we need to do is we need to declare this in our constructor. So I can just say low pass filter. And then what we can do is we can then initialize what state we want for this filter. So if we go down here, we can actually say we see a number of different static, uh, static pointers that we can use to set the filter type. So we can do, we'll make this a low pass filter. There are a couple low passes here. So I'm going to do this one here with a Q. So I can do, sorry about this, doing a bunch of doing a bunch of copying and pasting. So here we are. So I'm going to just paste this in here. And this is of type float. Somebody is blowing my chat up here. So we got we got this and then um, low pass make low pass. Okay, so we're going to put the sample rate in here, 44,100 frequency. We could just set it to, to just all the way 20,000 hertz. And we'll put this to 0 0.1. So it needs to be greater than zero or it'll give you an error. So that's, so that's what we've done there. So we've just initialized it, okay? So, so we've just used the initialization list to basically say what type of filter we want to make it. And then we've just had to go down this kind of hierarchy here to get to uh, the type of filter that we need to make it make low pass. And then we've just given it some initial settings. So that's cool. So now what we need to do is we need to create a function. So, so what we could do here is we can actually just say uh, low pass filter and then we can say process, right? Dum, 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 dum. Why isn't it doing it? Yeah, void process. Okay. And then as we did, 
as we did before in our state variable filter, we need to use a context argument here. Context, process context replacing. And then we just need to put a type, a type that we need to replace it with. And then we just need to tell it what buffer that we're actually using to, to replace. So, so we're just going to put this of type float here. And then here for our argument, we're just going to put our audio block that we have from the line above. <clears throat> so, so this is, so this is fine. And now we, we've come to a point where we need to relay the changes that we're making in the UI and tell it. So, so basically we need to update the filter. Okay. So we don't have a method here to do that. So we just need to create one. Okay. So I'm just going to create a method here. It's going to be called void update. Uh, so I need to do this update filter. And then I'm going to just copy this on the other side in the H file, update filter. I'm trying to work through these a little bit quicker as well. If this is going too quick for you, let me know and I'll, I'll slow down again, um, you know, in the future, in the future tutorials. So now we have update filter. So this is a little bit, this is a little bit trickier than what I, um, what I encountered with the state variable filter. Okay. And the reason is that what we have is we have, instead of having regular member, uh, let me just try, I'm just trying to get to the right place here. Sorry about this. Um, so let me go coefficients. Oh yeah, this reminds me. Um, make sure that um, when you're when you're actually implementing this, that you actually go to the DSP one. There's an IR coefficients, an IR filter, and that's not the one that you want. You want the one here that says DSP IIR here. So that's a, a completely different thing. So down here, now normally, you know, we would just have kind of a public member function that would. Um, a regular public member function that would we would implement and say make first order low pass or whatever type of filter that we want to make it. But you notice here these are static pointers. Okay, so that means that we need to use a pointer to actually um, to to actually uh, to actually implement this. Sorry about that. Lost what I was saying for a second. So <clears throat> what we need to do is we need to say. Low pass filter dot state. Okay. And let me show you where I'm where I'm getting that from. So 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 basically low pass filter isn't isn't an actual IIR filter, okay? It's a processor duplicator. Okay, don't get that confused. So this is a processor duplicator, not an IIR filter. So what we're doing now is we're basically going into the the process duplicator and then we're going into this part into the state excuse my dog she does this all the time in my tutorials so so that's that's where i'm getting that low that dot state from okay so that's that's this right here okay we're going into the attribute the state attribute here just to show you that i'm not getting this out of thin air basically so what we need here is we need to do a, a static pointer and then we just need to do whatever type of filter that we want here so we're going to do we are doing a make low pass so make low oh my bad sorry about this so we need to go through the hierarchy again. IIR coefficients type float, and then um, make low pass. 
So this kind of had me frazzled for a minute. And uh, last sample rate is what we want here. Frequency, we could get our value from our slider here. So we have, <clears throat> pardon me, we have a, um, a parameter here called cutoff and we have a parameter here called resonance. I can just take and delete this actually. Sorry about this, just gonna clean up a bit. So we have so we have those two parameters that we're getting, and then I'm I'm just gonna make two variables here. Uh, so this will be float freak equals tree get raw parameter get raw parameter. And then this will be the cutoff and then float res equals tree get raw parameter and then this is res anince okay so I'm, I'm only going through these a little bit faster because we've already gone through this in past tutorials so if you're kind of puzzled where I'm getting all this from, uh, be sure to check out some of the other tutorials. Okay, so so that's fine. So basically what we're doing is we're, we're basically setting our, our low pass. We're giving it the filter from our dial, our resonance from our dial, dial and that's in our method called update filter. So now all I need to do is I just need to update that here and then I've forgotten that we need to do a quick reset here. So low pass filter reset. So that just resets like if we were playing some music and then we stopped and then we went to play it again. We don't want those garbage values in the filter. So we're just resetting the filter there. And then we have low pass we also need to pass it our our uh, our what's it called our spec our process spec. So we need to do that with prepare. Okay, and we can just pass it our spec argument here. So there we go, and I think. This is everything. So hopefully we got this right the first time around. Just going to compile it. Um, by the way, I've started a, uh, a Patreon for the page. And I'll just put the link below. So if you wanted to support the channel, um, t-shirts I'm getting printed up and, those, and some stickers as well. And I'll have those as rewards for the Patreon for anybody that wants to support the channel so I can kind of expand on it. So there we go. Cool. So let's open up the filter. Here's our filter. Okay. Let's open up our audio player. Let's I'm just going to give it a file here. And then just so we can hear that the filter works. So there's our implementation of a infinite impulse response filter using the juice DSP module. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and we will be digging into some more. Maybe I'll do a uh, FIR filter implementation, kind of the same thing, but we'll uh, go through some more of the DSP juice module. So I will see you next time.